Hi, my name is John Tisbury, and with me today is Jocelyn Brooke Hamilton. Hello. Um, Jocelyn, if you've been uh, looking at previous videos, is a, a full time professional model, oh. and I do a bit of photography. This particular video is around improving your modeling and photography skills. We sort of could combine the two into, into the one the video, so you get two for one, buy one, get one free type thing. We're going to run through some tips, some ideas, some suggestions on um, improving your photography or improving your modeling. So sort of things that have worked for, for us over, over the years. Not that we've been doing it for a long time. No, like we're that. very young. <laughs> Okay, I guess that the first one off the bat would be um, self-development. Mm. Um, probably the most important thing to, to get into some kind of self-development. However that is for you. It could be reading a book. It could be watching um, this video, for instance. Other YouTube videos. Um, workshop, learning from websites. Um, however you do it, it doesn't really matter. But continual learning and continual development of your skills as a photographer or, or a model are vital. And for me, I've certainly t attended lots of workshops um, from people uh, who I admire. And you know, it's good to see how other people tackle things, what their experiences is, what their um, knowledge is, what they pass on. Um, and you, know, you always learn something. Even when I run workshops, I, I always learn stuff from other people on those workshops. So I, I never close down and um, become sort of self-absorbed. I'm always open to suggestions and ideas and you know, other, what other people do and how they work. So that's one which would be probably uh, top of the list for me, uh, the, the self-development. And I guess linked with that is looking at people that you admire. I don't know from a, a modelling perspective, how does that work? Certainly, I agree with you that I think there's maybe a little of a perception sometimes that self-development is something you should do at the beginning of your journey and then when, once you get good you, you can stop being influenced by other people. But certainly I would want to keep looking at other photographers and other models' work that I admire and break down why I admire it and what it makes me feel as though I might be lacking and then address that. I find it really useful to do that um, and I hope I will always continue to do that, certainly. Yes, it's, it's good to you know, look at photographers you admire or models you admire because it, it sort of stimulates ideas as well for you. It creates that stimuli for a new um, a bit of creativity, um, a new way of doing something. It's not a case of you know, copying, it really is that stimulus of that trigger of, of something new and it's surprising what you will learn um, from looking at other people's work who, who you admire. Sometimes I find it really useful to look at genres that I don't actually shoot and be inspired from that because then it's much easier to not copy because you're looking at a genre that maybe isn't yours but you can still be inspired by aspects of it. I find that really useful. I guess that's sort of linked in with another tip, but I was well led in there. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, <laughs> fine, absolutely fine. Thank you. Which is trying out a new technique so for instance, um, you know, I'm a fetish art nude erotic photographer, but I've done weddings as well. And I've done food photography and still life photography um, and sort of social photography. And they're all uh, sports photography. They're, they all have their own sort of disciplines and, and techniques and skills. And I guess in the same way you're saying with the modeling. Yeah, certainly. Like the same thing is going on that you can find yourself shooting a lot of one genre because it's something that you're known for but when you shoot a different genre and you realize goodness I'm not quite so adept at this you can while acquiring the skills to shoot that new genre then you can then bring some of those skills back into the genre that you do shoot a lot of and it's really useful yeah yeah so, so don't you know, narrow yourself off just for, for doing one thing Perhaps you're always studio bound, so get out there and shoot some natural light. Or, you know, vice versa, or shoot uh, with flash guns um, rather than um, studio flash. So, you know, try different things because it's surprising, A, what you learn from doing that, um, but also what other techniques and ideas that it triggers. And you can then uh, sort of end up with a blend um, across different genres, which then feed and, and flow into your personal work, your, your professional work. 
So, you know, it's good, it's good from, from that perspective. Next one is around, if you're going to try something new, is to you know, be open and honest with a model. So if I'm trying a new technique, for instance, it could be a new bondage tie or um, a new camera option or a new way of videoing something. I will practice it a bit beforehand just to make so I'm not particularly clumsy on the day. Um, but I will be upfront with the model and say, look, I haven't done this before, what I want to do, and sort of explain to my model exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing and what I hope to achieve from that because I find that really helps the model to understand that it may not go particularly smoothly and sets their expectations, but it also helps them to focus on the fact that, you know, I'm probably going to be a bit clumsy and, and it's not going to be as smooth and automated as normal, but they can adjust their approach as well to, to help with that process. That's a really good idea because I think people respond well to honesty anyway, but it also means that maybe the model can help you more than she would realize, she might not realize that she needed yeah. to help you. And maybe she'll be, for example, if you're doing a new bondage tie, she'll maybe be more vigilant if she feels like this rope's going to fall off. She might tell you because she knows that you're new to that yeah. particular thing rather than thinking, well, I'm sure he knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good call. The next one is around digital. So digital has been around for quite some time now. And a lot of people have you know, just learned particularly on digital and haven't used anything else. Me being of an age where I started on film, I guess I, I come from a slightly different viewpoint in terms of you didn't have the luxury of changing things afterwards in, in post-production in, in the computer. And that sort of uh, rigour and control has stuck with me. So I find that if I think any time that, oh, it's OK, I can fix that later in the computer, I'd stop myself, fix whatever it is there. So it could yeah. be... You know, like a cable running um, into the set where I can see it through the viewfinder or a piece of clothing that's in the wrong place on the model or, you know, whatever it is. I'm finding it obstructive to, to what I'm looking at in the frame and I'll stop and move it before carrying on. A couple of reasons for that. One, one uh, you know, it's, it's irritating for me to, to see it in the frame in the first place. Put me off. But probably more importantly, it's a great time saver. If I've taken 10 or 12 shots with that in, I know I've got to edit those shots in the computer. And it's not just the one, it might be two or three that I've got to do that same edit with. So it's a real waste of my time to do that in post-production. So uh, yeah, I guess be vigilant on, on digital. It can make you lazy. Um, so really think about you know, tweaking it or moving it or adjusting it before you press the button rather than, rather than afterwards. From a model's point of view, I would certainly always prefer to be given the opportunity to fix anything that I can fix, rather than making you end up spending a lot more time in Photoshop dealing with things that I could have fixed much more quickly at the time yeah. by just going and adjusting my lipstick or brushing my hair or whatever. And so certainly the fact that most of my photographers are shooting digitally doesn't let me off trying to get everything as perfect as possible on the day. And that's something I will always try to be aware of, that fixing things in post is not a panacea. It's not fast and it's not free. Um, the time it takes the photographer, actually, I could possibly fix that problem faster. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd always prefer to do that. Or at least be given the opportunity to try. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 